morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Alan Smith, and it's so good to be with you. And uh, it's been a long struggle to get to meet everyone. <laughs> From Duffy and Caroline Greenfield. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, right. And uh, eventually I said to Duffy, I'm not quite sure that at the end of the day. He says, God wants you there, and that's how the devil's trying to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got here, and it's great to be so unfortunate my wife can be with um, me because obviously there's very visa problems we had uh, in Tel And so she wanted something equivalent, so she's gone into Ireland and assisted with some things there. Yeah, so they having a great time. So looking forward to uh, spending these next few weeks with you, and uh, I it's going to be a wonderful time. A great blessing for you and for me as well. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. the Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people. Praise you for 
Please be seated. The psalm for today, Sunday, the 8th of May, is Psalm 116. <clears throat> I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard <clears throat> me cry for mercy. Because he turns his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall we return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. <coughs> I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. <clears throat> the epistle is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 15. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you walk firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed unto you as of, as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God, that was it with me. Whether then is it I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what we believe. You believe. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching, preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But it did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. 
This is the word of the Lord. The 
church was packed. Everyone had come to meet the new pastor. <laughs> they had heard so much about him for many weeks and so on. And they heard that he was dynamic and charismatic and that So they came to check him out. And uh, well, there was some worship as we did now, and then it was Easter, and he walked towards the lectern and he started preaching. About five or ten minutes into the sermon, there was a young man sitting towards the back, and he nudged an elderly lady, his lady sitting next to him, and he says, This chap's not as impressive as I thought you'd be. <laughs> And she looked at him and said, do you know who I am? He said, I'm the preacher's wife. <laughs> the young man quickly sort of gave his composure and said to her, do you know who I am? She said, no. And with that, he rushed to the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to know lots more about me and uh, how I came to faith. Quite dramatic during the charismatic renewal in South Africa in the 70s. Uh, we were about uh, four or five friends, and uh, we had heard the gospel being preached. We surrendered our lives to Christ, we were filled with the Holy Spirit, and as they often say in the classics, the rest is history. Because we went to different places and uh, traveled around the world, joined different organizations, and uh, we impacted. Uh, Various places. Good friend of mine, Tori Pierce, is in touch with me from the ministry for growing the church and Anglican to Blaze. And you can check them out on the, on the website and see the kind of impact <coughs> that that ministry has had, uh, not only across South Africa, but across the world. I'm married to Arlene. Uh, we have two children, Philip and Sean, that was in the 40s, and uh, we have three grandchildren. Uh, my granddaughter, um, she's uh, celebrating her birthday, her second birthday. The eldest is four, and then there's a young one who's four months old. And I just received the news of Mary that it was on Facebook that my daughter <coughs> is expecting that she is another girl in the way. <laughs> so exciting. I didn't also tell you that, oh, the lady over there. Um, we worked together in uh, St. John's Parish, Dublin for the Evangelical Parish in Cape Town, and I went to uh, this is a surprise, and they often see me there. <laughs> so welcome, so good to, to see you uh, today. Paul says, if Christ will not risen from the dead, our faith is in vain. Professor C. M. Joe, yeah, Professor of Philosophy at London University, a well-known agnostic was asked the question, if you could meet any person from the past and ask this one question, who would you meet and what would you ask? Jesus, who's risen from the dead. You see, the resurrection is important, and I think this is just a very exciting time as we reflect on the resurrection of the next week before Ascension Day, and then of course, plenty of it. It was a lovely, not just a wonderful feast day, but also what happened after that. Your faith stands or falls on your belief in the resurrection and its power in your life. And that's the important why we need to be asked to understand it fully and what it means. Without it, we have no hope for this life or the next, and we have nothing to tell the world. Paul and the New Testament writers um, were in fact, they gave an honest account of their unbelief, especially that of Thomas, and how Jesus appeared to many. And they believed that Jesus conquered death and was alive. It was the greatest miracle. And that's the reason why people moved from there and immediately went and proclaimed this message. They think of the women. Uh, at, at the tomb, I mean, they went and they told everybody about it. It was great news, and I believe it is an example for us to follow uh, as well. You see, these New Testament writers would have told Professor Joab that you do not have to wait 
the life we have to do with Jesus. You can do that because he's alive. And as the old Peter writer says, he walks with me and he talks with me. However, one finds that modern critics continue to question um, the resurrection. Um, and they dismiss this as a central tent of Christianity and he quotes the first century preaching material, which was eventually included with historical facts about Jesus of Nazareth. And that kind of thing often undermines our faith, and we wonder whether there's really some message to proclaim. Others have argued that, from a logical point of view, have said that it is obvious and blatantly unscientific that modern mind finds it hard to accept and says that it is a trick. That a God of love would not play on his followers. They teach that we shouldn't insist upon it, and that we can believe in Jesus without being totally convinced of the resurrection. I have problems with that. It's a fallacy, a fallacy that keeps being repeated by the secular press. A couple of years ago, uh, a magazine with a number of articles on the Christian faith asked me the following question Is the Christian faith growing? What do Christians believe? Do they believe anything, or is Christianity losing its claim to be a belief system at all? An archbishop is quoted, among others, and he says, For me, the body of the resurrection is neither here nor there. My faith doesn't stand by whether there was an empty tomb. Shocking. Shocking. And we need to be aware of this and the reason why so often. The witness of the church has become so weak and lacking in authority. Where the gospel to offend, not being one of my favorites, he would be getting sick towards uh, the end of the service. Where the gospel to offend? Good news to people everywhere. Something both by our words and by our actions. We are the gospel to offend. I love it. The way John Stott sums this up. Uh, he says, the concept of resurrection, you must remember this, the concept of resurrection lies at the heart. If you remove it, Christianity is destroyed. So now you can understand why that happens. And in a world which is in great need and desperation, we need a message of hope. And this is it. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. It's a message that needs to be prepared. But you see, how do we do that? Your faith needs to be brought up so that you can be strong and you can walk out with confidence. You see, those same disciples were like you and me. They had questions, they had doubts. Something needed to happen to build up that faith. So that they could speak with confidence and conviction, and the world could believe and receive, and the world would change. This is what they were playing. Acts chapter 4, verse 33 says, With great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and God poured rich blessings on them all. Well, I'm not surprised that God had poured rich blessings on them all because they proclaimed the resurrection. He lives, he's alive, and the same things that he did when he walked the face of the earth, he will do today. He will bring salvation, forgiveness of sins, taking away guilt, bringing healing and wholeness to those who hear this message and put their trust in Jesus. Same power that brought Christ back from the dead is operative in those who are past. The resurrection is an honor to all the And so here are 10 points which I want you to hold on to as we build up our faith and as we go play. I think this is a great place. Oops, I'm moving away from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a great, oh, this, this is really your God, that you have a place to celebrate Jesus 
uh, in a place like this. I mean, I think people need to see this. I know that there are people from Cape Town who will be looking as well and saying, wow, what an amazing place to have church right on the edge of a lake here. Yeah. I mean, you know, next time we should have speakers outside. <laughs> <laughs> but the resurrection is important and God prepares us. You know, he doesn't sort of spring things on surprisingly onto us. So the first thing is the resurrection was prophesied. That's the first thing. Over and over again. 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah promised that Jesus would be born in humble circumstances to live a simple life die a brutal death and he rise again to take away our sin. That's the first it was prophecy. I love prophecy. You know, when I look and I think, my gosh, if somebody can prophesy <laughs> so many years, hundreds of years before the actual event, and it takes place exactly as was prophesied, well, I want to put my faith in that. You know, I've heard so many people even give prophetic words in this day and age. How do you know where the word is prophetic? You know, people are coming along to me all kinds of things. And I mean, I remember one person coming along says, The prophet says, is that You're going to have a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm so <still> waiting. <laughs> but you know, we can trust this word from Isaiah and other prophets when they said about Jesus. And people put their faith in all kinds of nonsense. The year is something to hold the right upon. Secondly, Jesus predicted it over and over again. I can imagine that Jesus looked at his audience so often and he said, you know, this is going to happen to me. The Messiah will die. He will be accused. He'll be written off. He'll be buried. But on the third day, he rise again. And I guess many of them, even though he said, it's a Western mind or so on. No, we all put the same category there, like, no. Oh, <laughs> Uh, and sometimes we ask it of hearts to believe. Thirdly, Jesus really died. Now, there's been sex and, and various little groups and sort of, you know, oh, maybe he didn't really die. Maybe he just swooned. Uh, but Jesus really died. The biblical record is emphatic. He was beaten and scourged. Many died of this torture. He was crucified. A spear was thrust to his side. No food or water for three days. And a stone was rolled before the tomb. It was like, as we say back home, finish and cry. You know, that's it. It's over. We heard all about this man. We never get to hear about him again. Good riddance. He died. Jesus was buried in a tomb. That was easy to find. Fourth. Fifthly, Jesus appeared physically alive. When I walked in there today, somebody greeted me with a big hug. This is a nice church. <laughs> I mean, I have seen so many hugs already. <laughs> the real thing. <laughs> That's right. And, and that's it. Many people saw Jesus, and that's what they did like. The real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. You see, whether people say, you know, we should believe and not see and all of that kind of thing, seeing is believing. And they're touching, they're touching, this is a real thing. And that's the reason why we have the gospel today. We have all these records telling us, you've got to believe. Don't just sit there and wait for many days. We've got a purpose. And I believe that this church is like a purpose. Now, nothing happens by accident. I was telling my wife about the couple of things that have happened, you know, to me getting together with And then, of course, I went there and writing, and I've got hope to see And she, like, you know, she's like, and so on, and I gave her Romans 8, verse 28. All things work together for good. <laughs> So there's a reason, there's a purpose. And, and, and you know, one of the things which I love doing is help people discover what's your purpose. We're not just sort of a blob of flesh waiting for better days or waiting, you know, one day to go to the end. No, we've got purpose. And I need to keep on asking that. What's my purpose here? Even though it looks rather different and unusual, I've got purpose. I've got a reason 
to be here. Sixthly, Jesus' the resurrection was recorded as scripture shortly afterwards. Mark's gospel, the earliest gospel, records the resurrection of Jesus. Already, they were convinced they didn't need any more proof. They were convinced and they proclaimed this best and recorded something about, you know, something that's written down in black and white. You know, people are convinced you haven't got to write your book because you see, they say, why don't you put things down when it's written? Yeah, I'm going to retract this for a while. Okay, sure. Tell us about your story. We want to hear about it. Mark's gospel. Seven. Jesus, the resurrection was celebrated by the church. We read early on uh, in 1 Corinthians 15. Actually, we read those, uh, those, those verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, verses 3 and 4. Just listen. To these incredible words. It says, For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters. So it was, it was celebrated in the church. And that's the reason why we gather here today uh, because of the resurrection. And that takes us to the eighth point. Jesus' resurrection changed the day of worship. And so, you know, every aspect is so important. I help people to understand it. We gather here not because we think it's a great idea. Remember that for thousands of years, these folk who were Jewish had worshipped on a particular, and suddenly they began to worship on Sunday in memory of the resurrection. There might be various reasons why you gather here today, but we gather because Jesus died and he rose again. And we remember that. It won't be that simple. Remember that he died for us. Was wounded for our transgressions and our stripes we are healed. We remember that wonderful word from Isaiah, which we preach on uh, on Good Friday back at home. Nine, Jesus' resurrection changed the object of his worship. That's incredible. You see, after Thomas fell on the feet of Jesus, it is absolutely incredible. Thomas was the first person to the name of Jesus. The Lord and his God. What a revelation. We often talk about Peter's revelation to the other side. Thomas did something for us that was part of the service here on a Sunday morning. After Thomas fell at the feet of Jesus and proclaimed by Lord and by God, Jesus became the focus of the worship. And so it's okay we gather together to bring worship and glory to you. In actual fact, it is so important that I've been worried about some of the modern songs that exclude Jesus completely. And I often wonder who are we worshiping? Are we talking about this kind of general God and so on? Is that God, Trinity God? Is Jesus in truth somewhere? And I sometimes listen to this song and say, I could probably be a Buddhist or a Muslim, but I could sing the same words. Because it takes out sometimes the sort of centrality of this principle of Jesus. And that's why our liturgies are so important as well. Because it brings us back again to repeat again and again the things that they brought to Jesus. Jesus became the central neutrality of the worship. And then finally, the resurrection caused the rapid growth of the church. You know, I'm not going to proclaim something that I'm not going to be stopping my heart. Neither would I be prepared to be persecuted and killed for the sake of this message. These people were ready to die. 
And if you read some of those horrific stories, even the way some of those disciples died, oh my word, I'm not quite sure any person would be prepared to go through that much suffering for the sake of the Bible. This is the truth. Christ is risen from the dead. And if it's not risen, our faith is in vain and we are the most to be present. But we sing and we praise a glorious Savior whose name is Jesus. One that is required to proclaim. And I'm so fortunate to have done this for 40 plus years. And I will continue to do it. So that's the fact. And it's all to me. Oh, you need time! <laughs> Ah, he was shocked. Well, as somebody said to me that, uh, you know, in this ministry, there's no retirement. God just kind of just retired, retreat you, something like that. You just keep going. So it's been wonderful continuing to do this. In actual fact, we were part of organizing an altar hub at Christchurch in Kenilworth, where I worship and also I minister occasionally. And, uh, and we want to do what we need. To tell others about this Jesus. And I, I have found such a great tool. I remember I was studying for the Johannesburg area ministry there about 25 years ago. And Nikki Dumble of Princeton, South Africa. Yeah. And I met him there for the first time. When he started explaining to me that the Alpha of Court was all about, I sat down and I said to myself, This is a tool which I'm going to use. You see, there was a time where you used the method called evangelism explosion and you got to people's doors. Today, nobody's going to open the door. And when people have all the security around them and big walls and big fences and everything's going to be big. But without them, every one of you can have a group for a family member to come along. We often say it's a free meal on these things. And so many people don't. Cooking. So they can have a free meal, they will come along and they will have some fellowship with one another and they will hear this message being proclaimed. How oh, wonderful to hear a message being told about who is Jesus, why did he die, and how I need to put my faith and trust in him. And of course, the rest is there just to strengthen you so that you can become a witness. Not bless you as we celebrate the resurrection. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I believe Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit.
The Lord is our shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pasture. Mark cares and concerns for the church and for the world. Good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for the church, for all congregations, and especially those who worship at all saints in Almondsville. We pray for all clergy and all who minister through your word and sacrament. We thank you for the safe arrival of Reverend Allen, who has traveled so far to minister to us. We pray in particular for bishops, especially our own Bishop Andrew Lines, in their <coughs> task of shepherding the whole church. We pray for our new church council, for clear guidance and direction as they lead us in our vision for this church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for this troubled world we inhabit. The world we've inherited and will pass on to successive generations. Teach us to look after it carefully and wisely to share its gifts more fairly and work together to ease its sufferings. We pray for all who hold in it their power to destroy our world, especially those who are excited by evil things. Encourage the timid to speak and peaceful times to return. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for our families, our homes, our neighbours and our friends. We ask for the grace to do your will and be your witness to what it means to live lovingly, both when this is easy and also when it is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for the weak and vulnerable, for those who must live depending on others for every need. We pray for those who provide for these needs with loving heart and continued dedication. We pray for those who need your healing and especially those on our prayer list and those we hold dearly in our hearts. We pray especially this morning for Margaret Roberts, And in a moment of silence, let us bring these special people before God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Good shepherd of the sheep, we pray for those who have died. Remembering especially Reverend Mike Clarkson's uncle, we pray for those who bear the sorrow and of their passing, and commend them all to your unfailing care. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Good shepherd of the sheep, we give you thanks in that we, in that you, and that we are able to live through good and ill with the abundance of life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your son, our Saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand for the peace. We are those who are online as well and share the peace uh, with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
The hymn I've chosen for this one, the hymn I've chosen on this occasion is one that you might think you don't know, but when you get to the chorus, you'll find you do know it. <laughs> because, because Sue and I had a discussion, and I sang it, I don't know that's the gist of you, I sang it for well, I know that one, I think I sang it, but I don't know that one. <laughs> Shall we start? No, no, we'll, we'll start here. Yeah, just have a listen to the first verse. If you remember it, say the other way, just listen to see if you can catch it. And then we'll go into the point, which we definitely know. Get a chance to perhaps hear the scene and remind us of the scene. Well, you're in us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delights. So we chose the path of rebellion. You would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into the covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets. 
to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of the kingdom of earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven evermore, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has told us. We break this bread 
to share in the body of Christ. Man of God, you take the sinner, have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sinner, have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sinner, grant us peace. Uh, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave to you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed unto your hearts by faith your thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Christ our hearts are very sacrificed for us. As always, we will wait until everybody's served, and then the priest will offer you the bread and the wine.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. sorts of things. Thank you. Um, thank you to Sarah and Colin and Margaret who were at Brewster's yesterday for the table talk fair. And a reminder that James Big Event, the Queen's going to be there by the way, is <laughs> in our presence at the moment. James Norman that she lives there. <laughs> is running a tombola stall so if you have a route around for any unwanted gifts and um, bring them and give them to Sarah in the next few weeks. Um, yeah. Terry has asked and um, they're unwell this morning Terry has asked them um, for food for the Ukrainians just to keep bringing it and if he's not here Jane will pick it up and take it to the house and the friend out there's we've been invited to a festival in Beja in the Armatejo it's a Roman type festival, but I can warn you, Wendy and I know what it's like. If you go in the bus with them, it is non-stop chatter. <laughs> there is a lunch afterwards, and it's on 13th of May, leaving here at half past nine. And if you want information on how to inscribe for it, you speak to Jenny, she's got all of the information. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's go for
how do you do this? You can go on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I think so. I think that we need to agree that it's a bit of 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 the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and be raised with you always. Amen. Go in peace, in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.